Hello, I'm Brian Atkinson and welcome to UK Aircraft Explored. In this video, we shall cover the Spitfire Mark V's engine installation. I shall give you extracts from the 1942 Air Ministry Manual and show relevant reworked colour AP diagrams. I hope you find this interesting. We'll start with the wartime general description of the Spitfire's engine installation. The standard fighter versions of the Spitfire Mark V are powered with a Rolls-Royce Merlin 45, 46, 50 or 50A 12-cylinder V-type engine, which is liquid-cooled and supercharged. The LF or low-flying clipped wing versions are powered with a Rolls-Royce Merlin 45M, 50M or 55M engine of the same type. The engine of 50 series and above have a negative G carburetor and a D aerator. The engine drives a Rotor or de Havilland three blade variable pitch constant speed propeller and is mounted on a tubular steel structure attached to the foremost frame of the fuselage. This frame carries the fireproof bulkhead. Fuel is carried in two main tanks housed in the fuselage after the fireproof bulkhead and oil is carried in a single tank mounted on the engine mounting below the crankcase. Two oil coolers are mounted in tandem on the underside of the port main plane. The header tank for the pressure cooling system is mounted over the reduction gear casing at the front of the engine and the radiator is housed in a fairing on the underside of the starboard main plane. The engine controls for the throttle, mixture, boost cutout and propeller are located in a quadrant on the port side of the cockpit and the main fuel cock is controlled from the cockpit by a push-pull rod and lever as shown here. Here is a general arrangement view of the engine installation from the port side and from the starboard side. And here is a view showing the engine connections ready for the installation of the engine. Ejector type exhaust manifolds are fitted and the cowling panels are quickly detachable. The auxiliary units driven by the engine are a BTH or Haywood air compressor and a hydraulic pump. A 12 volt electrical generator type LX is fitted to the port side of the engine. The engine mounting is a tubular structure of steel and is attached to lugs on the fuselage by tapered bolts. A built up U shaped member is incorporated in the mounting and blocks are fitted to form bearers for the Merlin engine feet. Brackets and clips are fastened to the mounting for securing the various pipes and controls of the engine installation. The throttle and mixture levers are housed in a quadrant mounted on the port side of the cockpit, the quadrant being bolted to the top longeron. The two levers are mounted on a spindle which passes through the quadrant and are positioned between friction washers which in turn are separated by friction plates so that movement of one lever is not transmitted to the other by means of the washers. The inboard end of the spindle carries a friction adjuster and a lock nut, both being knurled, the lock nut being the smaller. On later Spitfire Mark V's, the mixture lever may be wired up or may not be fitted, as the mixture is automatically controlled by the engine. The quadrant plate has a slot for each lever and a gate for the throttle lever in the takeoff position. The mixture lever has only two positions, 
rich and weak. The mixture lever is fitted with a stop which engages with the throttle lever and is returned to the rich position when the throttle lever is returned to the closed position. Similarly, the mixture lever cannot be moved to the weak position without moving the throttle lever towards the open position. Connection between the levers in the quadrant and the lay shafts on the fireproof bulkhead is by means of push-pull rods. Attached to the forward end of the quadrant is a red painted thumb lever which can be pushed forward in an emergency to override the automatic boost control on the engine. The lever is connected to the engine control by a Bowden cable. The throttle and mixture lay shafts consist of two tubes, one inside the other, mounted on three brackets on the forward face of the fireproof bulkhead. The inner shaft is connected to the mixture controls and the outer shaft connects to the throttle controls. The inner shaft rotates in bearings in the brackets and the outer shaft rotates on bushes on the inner shaft. The port end of each shaft carries a lever to which the push-pull rod is connected and the starboard end of each shaft carries a lever which is connected to the engine by a rod. The throttle shaft extends only between the centre and port brackets but the mixture shaft extends to starboard of this and is fitted with a flexible coupling between the centre and starboard brackets. Moving on, the propeller speed control consists of a lever mounted on the spindle of the engine control quadrant, as shown here. From the lever, a Teleflex control runs forward and along the port side of the engine mounting to the constant speed unit on the engine reduction gear casing. The Spitfire Mark V is fitted with a slow running cutout control for blanking off the carburetor slow running device when stopping the engine. The control consists of a finger ring on the bottom starboard side of the instrument panel attached to a cable which runs forward through the fireproof bulkhead to the carburetor. The device is operated when the pilot pulls on the ring. The Spitfire Mark V was not fitted with hand starting gear, but a handle is provided for turning the engine for maintenance purposes. The handle is stowed in clips on the frame behind the pilot's seat and is engaged on the starboard side of the engine. The Spitfire 5 is fitted with port and starboard side cowling panels, a top panel and a bottom panel, as shown in this AP diagram. And now some views of the port side cowling panel. Here's a close up of the Zeus fasteners that are used to secure the cowling panel in place. Here we can see the rear port cowling and upper rear fasteners. And a view of the cowling fitment to the port fillet of the fuselage. The side cowling panels fit to the cowling framework, as shown here. This is the engine generator cooling intake, viewed from the rear. Now we have some views of the starboard cowling panels. The Shuttleworth Collections AR501. The Battle of Britain Memorial Flights AB910. and the Historic Aircraft Collections BM597. Here's a view showing the Zeus fasteners. Now we have views of the bottom cowling panel. The bottom cowling also acts as a cover for the oil tank 
and here are some views of the upper cowling panel. In this view, we can see the cooling intake for the Haywell compressor and hydraulic pump. Here are the views of the upper supporting frame and Zeus fastening details. The internal details of the BBMF's AB910 upper cowling can be seen here. Well that's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting. We'll be covering the Rolls-Royce Merlin 45 engine in another in-depth video soon. Please click the free subscribe button below and click the bell to get notifications when future videos are posted. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.